Today we'd like to discuss the importance of maintaining gas purity integrity through the vacuum furnace. The gas purity adds several years of hot zone life to your furnace. Impure gas causes leaks, discolored parts, oxidization of the parts, and hot zone. We're going to discuss some of the correct procedures for maintaining and charging the gas assembly. The furnace is fed with inert gas normally from one point connection, one focal point. The argon or nitrogen enters the furnace through the back filling and through the partial pressure subassembly. This must be maintained at the highest level of purity. Zero leaks are tolerable on this delivery system. This is the connection, the outlet, from the gas storage reservoir system which feeds the vacuum furnace. Normally we like to keep this particular run as short as possible. Keeping this line short maintains fast backfill speeds and maintains hardenability of your process, while at the same time mitigates the potential for leaks and excessive maintenance trying to troubleshoot this line. So normally we like this line to be 20 feet or less if possible. This is the gas inlet line that feeds the gas reservoir system. The gas inlet side carries argon or nitrogen in a gaseous form from the outside of the facility. On the outside of the facility normally is a liquid system and an evaporator. The evaporator converts the liquid to gas. The gas in turn feeds into the tank. The line feeding this tank and the line exiting the tank to the furnace must be free of leaks. We always recommend having a service valve in the tank which allows us to separate the tank from the outside source in the event that the tank needs to be replaced and or serviced for any reason. The second valve would be utilized for flowing or changing the speed of the gas entering the tank if needed. This device here is a safety relief valve to protect the furnace and the tank from inadvertent overpressurization. This device is pre-factory set to relieve pressure on this tank should the pressure inside the tank become too high. This safety device will relieve itself. Normally it's a high pressure incident if it occurs and it's good practice to take this valve and either put a filter on it or at least pipe it up and out of the facility or into your venting system. You you can see at this particular customer he's connected this and ran it to the ceiling to take it out of the facility. Here we have outside the facility the liquid bulk tank system. Normally maintained by a third party where the third party comes in and tops off the tank with a liquid form. The liquid argon or nitrogen then runs through the evaporator panel. The evaporator panel converts the liquid into a gaseous form. From the evaporator panel, it then goes directly into the facility and then the gas charges the gas reservoir buffer tanks that are located in each of the vacuum heat furnaces. There's two fundamental ways of purging this tank. One is the old tried and proven method, very time consuming, very expensive. It's called the purge pump, purge pump, where a customer will fill this with inert gas, backfill the furnace, pump it down, backfill the furnace, pump it down, and keep utilizing the tank over and over and over in hopes of purging the air or oxygen out of the tank and replacing it with inert gas. This feature works, it works great, but it's very time consuming, very expensive, and it's not really the preferred methodology for ensuring the tank is free of air. At Ipsen, what we like to do, and we found ourselves to work much better is, we actually jump open the backfill valve and then we utilize the furnace's pumping system to not only make a vacuum on the furnace, but to let the vacuum come through the backfill system and actually pull a vacuum on that gas buffer tank. And then we are able to pump the tank down into a very deep vacuum, which ensures all of the air and oxygen is pumped out of it. And then as an added step, we can connect the mass spectrometer, the helium leak detector, to the furnace. And not only can we leak check the furnace, leak check all of the devices is in pumping, but we can lead check the line and the connections all the way back to the tank 
from the tank out to the liquid evaporator system so we can vacuum check all of the inert gas assembly with the utilization of a mass spectrometer. After which time, we would close this valve manually leaving the system in the vacuum and then we would slowly introduce argon or nitrogen back into the tank and bring it back from vacuum to atmosphere and then from atmosphere to the desired positive pressure where the tanks were designed to run at. Now we are 100% sure that the gas in the tank via argon or nitrogen is 100% clean, pure, without contamination of air. All the leaks have been found and addressed and our dew points are excellent and ready for production. Again, the objective of heat treating, be it tempering, annealing, brazing, hardening, drawing, all metallurgical processes. Everybody's doing a different process in their heat treating furnace. People are expecting two fundamental things from their heat treating furnace. One is that the parts are metallurgically correct and what their expectations were. Second followed by cleanliness. The cleanliness of the furnace and the customer's parts are paramount. When we look at this furnace here, we just take a sample of a furnace that's well made maintained, very well kept up, the vacuum integrity and leak rate is very good. Let's take a look at the power feed through area. When we look at the power feed through area and the molly and some of the assorted hardware, we can see the cleanliness is exceptional. So we know that the leak rate of the furnace is good and we also know that the overall aesthetic value of the hot zone is there, the gas quality coming in is good. When we look at the hot zone over here, we can look at the molly. We can see the hangers, the pins, the graphite. There's no blue, there's no gold, there's no yellow, there's no colorization. The cleanliness is there, indicative of a furnace that's well kept, an exceptional leak rate, and a furnace where the gas delivery system is totally leak free. I have a sample part I'd like to show you. The sample part went in a little dark yellowish came out bright and shiny. The objective of all heat treatments, again, metallurgically sound parts, bright, clean, and shiny. Again, indicative of a well-maintained furnace that's leak-free and a gas system that's also properly maintained.